Good evening, Vigo's Court. Um, Hugh, would you go ahead and switch over to Killer for me? Will do. How are you guys doing today? I am your judge, Judge Shep. I am joined today by Counselor Q, and I hope you guys are ready for a fantastic game, because we certainly are. Yeah, super exciting today. We have got the mice versus deadheads, and this should be a fun one. You know, we're talking, we're now getting into week number two. We've seen some teams get to brush a little bit of the rust off in week number one after the preseason, maybe work on a few things, and now really trying to kick things into the gear for the regular season. Absolutely. And if you guys missed it, we had an incredible start to week two yesterday mm -hmm. with, uh, I believe it was Demise versus Four Dwarfs One Locker. Yeah, it was uh, really impressive. And, you know, yesterday we did make the decision now that we will um, always make sure that we're going forward with the fourth trial, regardless of the score, right? And make sure that both teams are having to use both killer options, which kind of makes sense, right? Um, and we did see yesterday, you know, Demise um they were able to put up a record score of 94 points really really impressive absolutely um just a really strong showing from a team that is, ha that has already proved that they are somebody to watch in this league yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. and you know i'm gonna be interested to uh see how they're able to build on that you know demise we kind of talked about last night at the end of the broadcast or even during the broadcast really you know that we've kind of seen them on a nice little run here, everything just kind of seems to be clicking for them. Uh, they won Swish's tournament a couple turn uh, a couple weekends back. The the champion of God, the tournament of gods, or whatever it was that was hosted by Tofu and Ralph. Um, you know, they won that. They've kind of been on a pretty good tear since then. We've seen them have some good performances in DBE as well as here in Vigos too. So, absolutely, it does seem like the stars are aligning for Demise. And let's talk about our teams playing today, because uh, if I remember correctly, Demise is actually kind of friends with Demise. Yeah, you know, we know that they have that little bit of, uh, you know, friendship there. So I'm sure one, obviously, they're probably pulling a little bit from the uh, strategies there. You know, obviously, probably doing some scrimming and things. Um, but also, I think it's going to be fun to see when they do end up crossing paths because they have that little bit of, like, friendly, you know, rivalry going on. But I'll be interested to see what Demise here is able to do kind of uh building on their own their own story right absolutely demise has already shown that um they are another really strong team um so i'm really excited to see what they do today and i'm also really excited to see what deadheads brings to the table yeah i like it because you know i feel like both of these teams we've seen some uh some flashes of greatness throughout courses of some different trials and i also feel like they've had some places that they've had opportunity for growth and i feel like both times whenever we see these teams i do feel like it seems like every time we see them they've improved a little bit so i'm um, gonna be interested to see as far as on both sides of the table how things go but um you know let's talk about it since we do have the mice we do have deadheads uh, let's go ahead and talk about where we're going to be playing today shall we absolutely So it looks like today we are going to be playing on Gas Heaven um, with an 8 hook minimum and a 13 hook maximum. There are a lot of options for those survivors to go for our killer, but you got to deal with those car walls and even just the cars in the middle sometimes also prove a hazard when trying to get anywhere on that map. Yeah, Gas Heaven is interesting, right? Because it is, it's not the largest of maps, but you mentioned it, those those two long walls of, of vehicles, right? They are stacked very tall and they really almost break the map up into like three different sections in a way, right? Like you have the middle area that also includes the gas station itself, which is a relatively big tile that can be, you know, looped around, especially before that generator itself is complete and it opens up the garage, right? Um, but then on either side too, generally you're looking at two generators on either side of like the big walls so i think on gas evidence especially it's really important to make sure that they're paying attention to what generators are getting done early um that way they're not setting themselves up for like a weird three or four gen situation at the end where the killer doesn't have to worry about half the map right yeah absolutely and you know caught on the wrong side of those walls for either side honestly can be really terrible so you really have to pay attention to where you are on the map and what you have around you because you could be putting yourself into a dead zone if you aren't careful yeah i'll be interested to see um what we see come out here as far as some killer picks i wouldn't be surprised to see you know something like a billy come out because obviously the billy has the ability to um 
traverse from one like little i, I want to say quadrant but it's really like a third of the map right to the other and be able to put pressure on the gen relatively easy um you know with it being a auto haven realm huntress wouldn't be a bad choice either because a lot of that section in the middle has like the lower um like walls and stuff so huntress can still be able to apply the damage over those areas too and even with um i feel like recently i feel like we've seen demo dog move up on the list for a lot of people and demo dog once you get set up can actually have a lot of success in this map too yeah, Demogorgon can put down a lot of pressure um, thanks to those portals. So if you give him a little bit of time to set up and he's not harassed too much, um, really great traversal of those three sections uh, that he can take to his advantage. But um, yeah, I'll be interested to see, you know, especially because it is week two, right? Um, so you can probably assume that both teams more than likely are going to still be conserving those S tier killers for the games that I want to say that the games that matter more because I think over the, we'll see notice over the course of the 12 weeks most weeks are going to matter but save your S tier for when you're on a map that you can really flex them on right and I don't think gas heaven's one of those maps that you really feel like you can get the optimum like pick out of any of the three you know yeah but there are plenty of other options I mean we have seen um some of the S tier killers already come out um mm -hmm. I think in week one we saw somebody play a nurse so I would be surprised, but maybe not that surprised, if someone did decide to bring an S tier out. I think the only one um, who would super excel on this map is maybe Blight, since he can kind of get around those big obstacles really quickly. Um, but somebody actually brought up Oni, and uh, I think Oni would be a really interesting choice. And whenever you're ready, Q, you can go ahead and switch the spectator there. Yeah, you know, I um, I do like the idea of Oni. Um, the one thing that's tough with Oni, though, is, of course, Oni tends to struggle a little bit in the early, you know, in the early game. And, you know, with it being an auto haven around it, there are a decent amount of, like, little filler pallets that can allow those early chases to be prolonged while you have the rest of your team spreading out. And the other thing with that, again, with it being, like, an auto haven map and, say, like, an Oni-chan, right, kind of known for struggling in the early game, maybe sometimes comes with a ruin but again auto haven maps not exactly known for like the best hidden like totem spawns either right yeah those totem spawns <laughs> on auto haven might as well come with a big neon sign like bones here <laughs> yeah. thank you yeah we're here you go ahead feel free to, to cleanse me it's almost like they're leaving the trail through the forest like hansel and gretel right some breadcrumbs for you sir <laughs> yeah <laughs> i love it i love it so we're heading into trial one here and we do want to keep in mind right like um now with having to uh play out all four trials you don't have the benefit here i would say as far as the killer of coming out with a strong killer round having two strong survivor rounds and then not having to burn that fourth killer right that's kind of like or that second killer that's kind of the reason that we did see that change go along um, so I'll be interested to see if that causes any of our team's strategies to change moving forward as far as what killer they're bringing out first, knowing that they're going to have to burn a second one, right? Like, you can no longer come out with a stronger first one to save a killer burn. Absolutely. It'll be interesting to see what everyone kind of does with this. And after checking that all of our offerings are right, why don't we check out some survivor rules, Q? I like it. We'll go ahead and go as far as to our survivor rules here. So the first and second gen for those survivors are going to be one point each. Third and fourth are going to be two points each. And that fifth gen is three points. But where our survivors are going to get all of their points are going to be those escapes. Because that first escape is one point. That second escape is two points. That third escape is worth four points. And that fourth escape is a whopping six points. So they really got to get the heck out of dodge. If you escape with two or more survive or hook states remaining, you actually get an extra point per survivor. There are 26 points available for our survivors to earn for their team. And for more on rules, check out exclamation mark rules in chat. I like it here. We are uh, getting ready to load in. Keep in mind, we are going to gas heaven chat in case we have anybody who is uh, just walking on in here to chat and happen to miss the map that we are going to be on here. And, uh, you know, with that being the case, again, I'm going to be interested to see what options are as far as the killers on both sides, again, keeping in mind that it is week two, so pretty much all options are on the table. Um, but you do kind of want to be careful. Again, it is early in the season. You don't want to um, 
take away any of the stronger killers that maybe you would like to use on a different map here. We do see a little bit longer of a loading time here. We want to make sure that we've got everyone getting in a okay here. The game loves to keep us on our toes. So much suspense. I love it. All right. Let's go ahead and head on in here. And ooh, I always love to see my humongous, humorous friend. We've got the clown coming out. Interesting to see the... Uh, I, I feel like the clown... I like the pick here, right? You do have the... Uh, you, you are going to see... We're going to get a little bit of the aura reading there from the cigar box. That way, every time... Cades here is working inside of that yellow smoke. You're going to be able to see exactly where the survivor is. And of course, the clown has always been notorious for being able to shut down those chases relatively quick with just the regular tonic there as well. And then we are going to see that quirk there. It's going to also help with that reload time. I do like seeing the clown here. The one thing that we're going to have to keep in mind is Cades is really... Oh, gets done so bad. Oh. Cades is really going to have to hope for some pressure early in chase. And um, that's especially knowing too that uh, we don't have any help as far as from Ruin. You'll notice that oh, on the right, we had, or when we had pushed the Felix off, that we didn't have any sparks coming off that gen. And that is our first gen done for our survivors. So hopefully our killer can get it down here. I think Clown is a really interesting choice. I'm kind of like awestruck by that. Yeah, it's an, it's an interesting choice here for sure. Again, especially because it is a little bit bigger of a map. Um, but I do like the idea, again, with the cigar um, box, being able to get the you know the location of your survivors. Also being able to... Ooh, use the speed boost. We actually see it there. Really nice play around the wall, getting the one down. Wouldn't be surprised to see Cades going for a second uh, health state real quick. Ooh, nice dodge, though, of the blind. And it does look like that should be a hook state here. Will be hook number one, but we actually see a second gen coming in. And wouldn't be surprised to see a third gen coming in pretty quickly here too so with Nea over here you gotta wonder what kind of gen pressure is being put out she came in she did come in for that body block that, that's that's actually a really good point and we do see here um coming in moving with the uh again that that box is actually really big value right we saw it was the survivor that was in there actually moving on the back side of the gas station so instead Cade's breaking away and actually coming back for the unhook this is going to be that situation. It's kind of a smart decision and easy decision to make here to come back and go for the tunnel out, right? We're going to see the use of the yellow bottle here. I think you should be able to close this distance before the pallet. That's going to be another down that's really big here. Though you do got to keep in mind, we do have a, I think that was a Nia behind us. I do think, oh, oh, that's another survivor coming in with the pallet Dude. save. Wow. That's insane. Good teamwork on the survivor side here to, uh, get their friend off that shoulder and that's big right because that probably would have been a hook there and then instead we do see a third gen coming in across the way felix now being able to make it towards this pallet space and we have a body block coming in too so now we still have yet to get a second hook state and we are already talking about three gens being done yeah pretty uh pretty hairy situation for our killer here but you know what they say uh the most important gens are going to be those last two generators yeah, that's a very good point there, right? And we do see, you know, our survivors have done a pretty decent job as far as their spread. Ooh, nice hit. Probably looked very, very friendly on Fry's side there. This is going to be the important piece, though, right? Because you have Fry on the ground, but you also have a Neo right here that is injured. And ooh, if you don't have Dead Heart. Ooh, that is a Dead Heart. Very good Dead Heart there. Yeah, that was a really close one. Here's going to be the, the part that's interesting, though. With those bottles able to shut down. Ooh. Oh, Nia got the distance just in time. Nia, spicy with that flashlight and those pallets there. No. Oh, not again. <laughs> you ever feel your heart just drop? <laughs> I actually thought Nia was going to be able to pull it out there without even having to use the resource of the pallet there. But that is going to be a second hook. But we're talking about four gens already coming across here. This is huge value. And we see another healthy survivor that's relatively close being the Claudette here. That is going to be Paige, but Paige taking the hit. Now going to be able to move in. The only question that you can't help but wonder is, is that a, uh, I was going to say, is that a borrowed time play? But actually we do see Cade's going to go ahead and take the easy hook. I like that decision here because you do uh, notice over there on the right side of your screen, you're going to see that haste status coming in. So you do at least secure yourself the fresh hook that maybe you could 
you know, maybe stack up some extra points a little bit later, but would really like to uh, find an elimination here. We see moving towards the door, the No Way Out proc lets you know that there were survivors over here earlier. And now with that yellow gas, going to be able to close this distance even more. Keep in mind, though, now we're moving towards the backside of the gas station here. There isn't really thing, anything around here, so if our survivor is able to build a little bit of distance, we might be looking at a four out. Absolutely, and that pallet being down but not broken is going to cause some problems for our clown here, it looks like. Ooh, Ooh nice. Not big enough of a problem. Yeah, that was actually a really, really... I like the mind game there by the clown coming in. We are going to get a... Um, a broken set of bones there that is actually going to be no at already getting cleansed this is tough right because you've only got three states uh three stages worth of pressure so there's really no rush on getting anybody out if you're out the door right now other than maybe fry fry has got to be careful obviously being on death hook but everyone else you can kind of be careful if you're trying to get the four out here because remember that fourth uh fourth escape as we talked about is worth six points Absolutely, and it looks like our killer here has learned to uh, look into those walls. Yeah, kind of interesting to see to going for the uh, the middle hook there. I feel like you probably actually could have had a hook on the back side of the uh, on, on the back side of the gas station would have had a little bit closer. We do see Cades putting some pressure here on the one door, forcing the door to be open. The good news with that is that does start the timer, right? At least now. You, you have the survivors on the clock. You do also notice that all of the survivors, well, I was going to say are injured. We do see a uh, heal coming in on by, from Savage there. And now with Cades moving in, can see all of those auras there with the cigar in, uh, box. Really big value. And maybe even one more use of it heading towards the hook could really help out here. Absolutely. I think uh, that aura reading has been really big information, and as most killer mains know, information is what you need to win the game. So he could definitely put down a lot of pressure here if he can do this right. Yeah, I'm interested in the play of seeing Fry being the one that comes in for the save there, right? Knowing that Fry is the uh, player that is on death hook. I guess maybe the thought is... You can uh, maybe bait, bait a save or an unbreakable play. We'll have to check and see if maybe Fry has unbreakable. They're hoping to maybe leave him behind for an unbreakable sort of play. It is going to be a three out here, though. And that is going to be with, uh, what are we looking at? The three hooks on the elimination and two fresh hooks. So, I mean, a decent performance by a clown as far as in a competitive scene, but a really good performance by our survivors as well. Absolutely. Tons of pressure from our survivors. Those gens were absolutely flying. And you know what? I think they were okay with sacrificing Fry to get those extra points for escaping with less hook states. You know, that's a good point. I, I didn't um, I didn't think about that. I love seeing that Price talking about how he tasted at one point. You love to see the friendly uh, banter between the teammates. Yeah, but you know, interesting point. Um, I didn't I actually didn't even think about that as far as the uh, leaving behind to get the extra escape points. And as we do see, you know, Demise here actually sitting with a really good lead after one game we're talking about a 19 to 11 lead that's really good after one uh one side there especially since that was at your that was your survivor side right absolutely although um i will say good showing from a killer that is not quite often considered a good pick for competitive play i think uh case did a really good job here um and while there is a lead i don't think it's an insurmountable like lead so i think Cade did at least set his team up to go into these survivor games and really you know bring some points to the table yeah i would agree with that 100 100 right especially because too we had kind of talked about how this you know with it being week number two we we probably aren't going to be seeing any s tier killers to begin with so you come out with the clown you have, again, a relatively decent performance. Five stages on a clown. I mean, I think most competitive teams will take that any day of the week, and some will probably take it twice on Sunday, right? So if you can come out here and have a good performance now on the uh, the survivor side, you know, now you can kind of equalize the playing field a little bit. Absolutely. And we did see some really good teamwork from our survivors there. So I'm interested to see what our next team is going to do. Um, if there's going to be as much body blocking or if they're going to do more of a, like, gens before friends approach. Yeah, you know, I think that's a really good point you bring up talking about how, um, we, you know, we saw Demise there coming in with some really good rotations to come in for the body blocks. 
prolong some of those chases. We saw the one pallet save. We almost saw an additional flash. I think we actually almost saw an additional two flashlight saves. Um, so yeah, maybe not as fast on the generators, but I feel like that's where they were able to kind of spread out the pressure as far as not so many hooks, right? I think that's like a nice little counter. Yeah, I think definitely um, Nea and uh, I think it was Felix, between the two of them, really managed to keep the killer preoccupied. Yeah. Uh, so that their other two teammates, I don't even think we saw the other two until the end of the game. They were mostly just chilling out on gens, taking every bit amount of uh, time True. that their teammates got for them. Yeah, that's a really good point. You know, I don't think we saw Claudette until what, like after the third gen was done there, coming in towards helping on that middle save after the first save, right? Absolutely. Um, and yeah, so I, this is going to be big. And especially, again, knowing that Demise is now heading into the back-to-back -back killer sets, right? Um, and as we'll talk about heading into this next trial, we'll show exactly how those killer um, points break down. But you can earn more killer points or more points on the killer side. So now Demise has the ability to really be able to, like, extend this lead at this point, right? Absolutely, yeah. And um, I have noticed throughout the, um, you know, the two weeks of preseason and then our first week last week that um, most teams either favor one or the other. So I'm really curious to see if uh, the survivor side was the strong side for Demise or if it was the killer side that's going to be their strong side. Yeah, I think that's a good point because we are seeing that, you know, some some teams in the league do seem to be relying on one more than the other. Um, but I would say we are noticing kind of a closing in that gap here. And I think the mice is kind of one of those. And I don't know if part of that is because maybe of the camaraderie and maybe the um, <clears throat> the good vibes from Demise, since they're all friends, is rubbing off on them too. You know, maybe that's a little bit of it. Because um, it seems like they're, they are they seem to have that just really good chemistry going on on both sides, I would say, as far as Demise. Um, and we'll kind of see as far as how Deadheads is going to be able to come out and uh, respond as well. Very, very excited to see how these next couple games go. That first game was really fun to watch, especially with, uh, again, I'm still kind of like, a clown pick is really incredible. Yeah, whenever um, I get to see... see my humongous, humorous friend is always a good day. Absolutely. Um, and I'm kind of hoping for a few more, like, strange picks now. Uh, clown has given me a little bit of taste of, I want to see something a little <laughs> different now. Yeah, I mean, you know, with it being early in the season, wouldn't be a bad time to still see some teams maybe trying out some of those other killers, um, seeing how they how they set down. Um, again, because it is still really early. Probably not bringing out too many more of your S tier killers. Um, and, and especially now with Demise having a little bit of a lead, if, if there is any time to bring out a trial killer, having a lead going into back-to-back -back killer trials is probably the time to do it, right? Absolutely, and I think we are ready for you to switch over to spectator role. It looks like our teams are all getting ready here. Fantastic. I'm excited. They're ready. I'm ready. Um, and, you know, we talked about a, a good first trial, and now we're switching the sides here. I, I think the big thing for the survivors, especially knowing that it's not like set play, right? Like you're not coming out against the same. You're not going to come out against the clown. Don't feel like you have to match the survivor performance in trial two as long as you can maintain like as long as you can make sure that the the lead doesn't get built here maybe if you can just cut in the lead just a little bit that way you can set yourself up for trials three and four especially knowing in four you're gonna be on the killer side which awards you more points absolutely and let's check out these offerings everything looks good to go q how about we look at those killer rules now see what our killers have to do to earn some points for their team i am down for that let's do it all right, guys, so here's what our killers have to do. The first and second hook are worth two points each. That third hook is worth three points. Progressions are worth one point less. And the seventh and eighth progressions are worth one each. For a 4K, you get two additional points. So you want those extra points, you gotta kill them all. And entity kills are worth the corresponding hook, plus progressions. Eight outs equal zero points. There are 30 points available. And for more on rules, type exclamation mark rules in chat.
All right, it does look like we've got a uh, another little bit of a longer load time here. I like it, building up the suspense a little bit here, right? Um, and again, you know, keeping in mind here right now, you're coming out on the survivor side. And out, if you're coming out on the survivor side here, um, I think the first couple minutes is going to be the most important thing and seeing how they respond. Because if we do see Demise come out here, and get a couple of early hooks. You know, the deadhead, that's when they start feeling the pressure. You're already down, then you start getting yourself a couple early hooks. How do you respond there? So I'm gonna be interested to see how that goes as far as for Demise. You do probably hear that in the background though. That is actually us finally into the game. Again, gas station, we are going to trial a number two, Demise versus Deadhead. And we have Fry here coming out running the nightmare with the freddy i like this pick really because of course freddy's uh kit allows him to be able to traverse across the map with the teleportation there that you're going to have the ability to put pressure on multiple gens we did also see there when we came into the shack right we were pushing survivors off of that generator we are actually going to see the ruin in play however also worth bringing up while we have some protection from ruin no corrupt intervention so actually allowing all seven gens to be uncovered right here at the uh, start. What's your thought about that? I think that's super interesting, but since Freddy does have the ability to kind of pop between generators, maybe a very confident <gasps> move by our killer here. <gasps> oh no, the hit validation. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure if that was a dead heart or what. I think that was a dead heart though, possibly there by the thing. Nice play, to, uh, you know, prolonging the chase here. Now making it towards the shack. We have seen Fry has been able to place themselves a couple of those uh, blood pools there. That is going to be a down just outside of the shack. We are, though, going to see two proxes, and now we can talk about it. Tinkerer into play here. So we've got the Ruin. We've got the Tinkerer. Keep in mind, though, right? Like, Tinkerer kind of always been one of those interesting picks on the Nightmare because he still has the Lullaby, right? So if the survivors are staying in the Dream State, you still have the Lullaby to let you know when he's on the way, right? Absolutely. I do think Tinker has a lot of value for Freddy as telling him where to go, especially in this game where he doesn't have that corrupt intervention. So I think this is going to help him provide all that slowdown that he needs. But definitely an interesting choice for a lullaby killer. Yeah, especially, you know, you bring up a really good point with as far as the uh, pairing with the ruin there. Um, because obviously the Tinker lets you know which gen's really, really close, right? You can push pressure there and push them off. And if you're able to keep pressure on the gen, that's fine. But we saw here in this case, unable to keep pressure. And now we've got gens flying left and right. That's three generators complete already. And we have only one hook state to show for it so far. Really good looping and patience shown here by Harley Quinn. Now breaking away and should actually be able to make, make it to this next filler pallet. Oh, get stunned, stupid. And we see a little teabag there saying, I got you, friend. Love to see the uh, the competitiveness between these two. <gasps> Ooh, with the nice Ooh, dead heart that again. dead heart again. Claudette trying to come in to save her friend, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen. No, I think, you know, the hope was that you were going to be able to come in and take the hit before the pallet, which would have been huge because it would have given uh, Haley the opportunity to make the distance get in the vault there. Instead, though, that is going to be a hook here in the middle of the map, and that's hook number two. Keep in mind here, we do still have Ruin up, but we have already got three gens completed and only two hooks to stay, uh, hook states to show for it. This is going to be a tough situation because you kind of want to secure a gen, but you also don't want to lose any more gen, right? Absolutely. I think, though, our Freddy here might have a game plan. I do see those three gens and kind of a loose, like, three gen if he can control where that other gen pops. Also setting some traps by this set. Really looking to secure something here. Yeah, you know, we're talking about you can set yourself a decent little three gen. And really, even again, we talked about the, the Freddy's power to teleport, right? Like, so really, a three gen's not as big of a deal. We do see moving in here. We do see that ruin still in play, though. So even with as far progressed as that gen is, if they don't keep constant pressure on that gen, that thing can be regressed all the way back in as, in as little as two minutes if they aren't able to keep pressure. Yeah, so looks like we're going to get the unhook here and... Freddy has to make a choice. Does he go for the tunnel? And it looks like he does. Yeah, this is a tough situation, right? Because obviously that generator over there, you heard that thing. That thing was knocking like a four in the middle of December. That thing's, you know, just about ready to go. And even though you have Ruin, more than likely, 
that she, yeah, I was gonna say that the generator is gonna be going here in the next couple of seconds, regardless of how much pressure you put on it. So you would rather at least come across over here and see if you can ro get yourself a secured kill and still maybe make a play in the end game to get some additional uh, hook states as well as progressions. He's still coming after this bang here. That pallet does go down. I've seen an interesting lack of breaking pallets. Such a good dead hard from our Fang. Yeah, you know, I feel like Fang has gotten really good value from that dead hard multiple times. Even with Freddy knowing that the dead hard is there after the uh, early exchange between the two, we do see the Fang now breaking away, making distance. And this is tough because Fr uh, Fry here knows that you have a generator over here that has that Tinkerer procs. We have both the Ruin and the Undying getting cleansed as well. The pressure is on. This is where our survivor is really going to be able to try and you know start the little bit of the sur surmount of the comeback here especially because we're looking at only two hook states and the person that you're currently chasing is not your survivor that is on death hook and while there is more value in getting those first hooks out i think it might be a little late in the game to be looking for that i would have gone after fang honestly yeah i feel like the the commitment to fang there definitely would have been the ideal choice i think the uh, hope was you were going to come over and put pressure Onto the generator. Keep in mind when you're coming over towards this gen that we just teleported to. Originally, you had both the Ruin and the Undying basically on either side of it. It just happened to be a very, very unfortunate chain of events where you lost both of the Ruin and the Undying. The good news is you have found yourself another uh, survivor. Maybe be able to stack up a couple of more hooks before the end game cycle itself starts. But... We do see that there wasn't anybody that had to go in for the save because that actually looks like that was a deliverance play coming in. Now we're seeing the adrenaline play. Adrenaline. Allowing not only the distance to be built here by Harley Quinn, but also the change in health state, which is huge because you're going to notice Fry does not have a haste status. There's no no end here. So now it's going to take two hits to bring Harley Quinn down instead of one. And now Harley Quinn can start making their way towards the door. Hopefully her teammates are already there. Uh, it would be interesting to see if there's no way out. That seems like a very popular perk among killers these days, but it doesn't look like it. That door is just going to pop right open on the other side of the map. Or on this side of the map, my bad. Yeah, I mean, I, the good news is you probably... I, I'm guessing if you're having Harley Quinn running right for that door before having somebody move in, you probably have both of your borrowed time plays players available, if I had to guess. We do see here Fry trying to uh, make the walk bring this survivor as far away from the door as possible and we do see that we have one injured oh my goodness we have no injured survivors now so we have three healthy players and you have to imagine that the chances of them having two oh with the swing and the miss that buys them time oh that's one coming in oh that's gonna be here we're probably gonna be a borrowed time here there's the hit there now there's plenty the of time. now you have plenty of bodies in the way that's gonna be a four escape I do think Freddy misplayed here and forgot that firecrackers had already been dropped. Yeah, that is... Uh, and that will cost him. Man, that is huge. We're talking about four walking out the door and deadheads here really being able to turn things around as far as the scoreboard, right? We were talking about them being down by eight heading into that trial. And thanks to that round, now looking at a nine point lead wow oh wow i mean that's that, but that's kind of what we're used to seeing like in the competitive scene right like you talked about maybe a potential misplay and sometimes one or two mistakes man can make such a huge difference in the competitive scene absolutely everyone here is really quick and really well skilled so they will capitalize on any mistake that is made by either side here and really good on deadheads proving that they did not come to mess around they are here to play this game yeah i like it right really good bounce back especially you know after you already used what a lot of people would probably consider like one of the lower tier killers you come out and you bounce back and you have a really strong survivor round so it's like it did it matter really dog i still have a lead after the first set homie we up by nine dog what you mean uh, yeah a lot of confidence in each other there yeah, and I'm going to be interested, you know, now, especially if Fry is staying on Killer, which it looks like might be the case, right? You just came out, probably weren't anticipating a 4K with Freddy, but probably also weren't anticipating a, a, a two-hook game, right? So now it's about if Fry is staying on Killer, how does the bounce back happen in Game 3? 
I think that opens the door to us seeing maybe some higher tier killers here um, because they're going to want to make up those points and they're going to need to get enough of a lead that going into their next game, uh, they don't have to worry about it as much. Yeah, especially, you know, keeping in mind that they are going to be finishing on the killer side, right? So mm -hmm. if you can, we already talked about the differences between the last two rounds. You have the availability to get more points on the killer side. So if you can go into the killer round with the lead, you know, it's kind of a nice little, nice little ad, but you're gonna have to fight back after that, that last, or you're, if you're, if you're wanting to put yourself in that position um, to go into, sorry, the survivor round and have yourself in a lead, you need to have a really good uh, round here as the killer. Absolutely. And uh, I'm gonna ask you to switch into the killer side. And then while we do that, let's talk about our map again, revisit where our survivors and killers have been playing today. Today, we are playing on Gas Heaven, one of our Auto Haven Wreckers maps. It is a pretty decently sized map, kind of a weird shape. It has an eight hook minimum and a 13 hook maximum. So uh, lots of places for our killers to take those down survivors, but you gotta worry about obstacles like those long car, uh, car walls and even those weird bits in the center, which have really weird pallet spawns, honestly. Yeah, you know, you get, you can, especially because you can tend to get a lot of those filler pallets in the middle, like back to back, right? So if you can catch yourself where you're not using that middle, those middle pallets until like after two or three gens of pop, it allows you then at that point, because you've probably completed the middle gens, you're now probably spread out on the outside gens and you're wasting time in the middle with a whole bunch of filler pallets, right? Yep. Yep, can put yourself in some really awkward situations, not speaking from experience or anything, but... <laughs> Really uncomfortable. So knowing that, you know, right here, as the killer, you're looking at a nine point deficit. You want to make sure that your survivors are in a good spot heading into trial four. If you weren't anticipating an S tier killer, is this where you switch over and maybe bring out a blight knowing blight's mobility? Or again, knowing that gas heaven isn't the best map for blight, you go ahead and still reserve blight back and just maybe stick with your game plan. That's a really interesting question, and honestly, I think you might want to bring maybe one of those higher tier killers, but I think our teams are ready, so we can find out here in just a moment and see how they decide to respond to what's happening here and what they're going to be forced to do going into these last two games. Yeah, I think the big thing is watching how both sides respond. Obviously, the survivors just had a really good um, trial, right? If they're able to keep that momentum through like a first chase or two, I feel like they're going to just feel like they're on top of the world, just aren't going to feel any sort of pressure. Um, whereas if the killer falls a little bit behind in a early chase or two, <laughs> might be feeling the pressure after a two-stage game, right? Absolutely. And uh, after checking all of these offerings are good, let's talk about what is and is not allowed in Vigo's courts? All of our bans. So we do have some bans and build restrictions. The only items allowed are yellow items and add-ons. Only one of each perk and item, except you can have two BTs. That is A-OK -okay by us. Um, we do have some banned perks, however. Built to last, prove thyself, and Starstruck, too strong for us. Haunted Grounds, Lethal Pursuer, and any boons, as well as Clairvoyance, also are not okay to bring here. Killers used are limited to twice a season, so you can only use them twice in the entire season. Survivors are also limited, so you can only have one character per team. So no, no double bunny fangs. Violations are subject to penalties. For more on our rules, check out exclamation mark rules in chat. That's right. Even if your team name is four Dwight's one locker, you're only allowed to have one Dwight on the playing field. Them's be the rules. Unfortunately for four Dwight's one locker. Sorry, guys. I'm going to be interesting here. I, I still think maybe like I like the idea of either like a Billy or a Huntress because it's not like one of your S tier killers, but it is a, a killer that can put a lot of pressure down on this map here. Right. But let's go ahead. It looks like we have finally uh, loaded up Ooh, here and we talked about it. it. We talked about it. Um, the possibility of bringing out an S tier. And uh, it is the one that we talked about having the ability to traverse this map very well. It is going to be the Blight. And of course, uh, we are going to notice there in the left-hand corner, the double speed add-on. You know, a very common duo 
for the blight here. Ooh, gets done, stupid. Plus 10 wood to the face. Um, but we're also going to see that combined with, you know, the common commonality there of that corrupt intervention. Taking a very early hit here onto the Claudette, though. We're here at Shack, and now we're moving into the uncorrupt side of the map. This could be kind of big because you can get it down over here while still being able to put pressure on your gens. Nice Ooh, dead hard by Claudette. Dead hard. Ooh, and now Claudette's going to be able to take the distance. Should be able to make it over here to the Shack. Should be able to use Shack Pal. That is going to be an easy throw of the shack pallet i know a lot of people who maybe are just used to public games would wonder why you throw it at five gens but you can count on your teammates to be across the map working on gens regardless that is going to be a down though onto the claudette keep in mind maybe uh not worth the pallet throw knowing he took it down just 15 seconds later and that is going to be a hook now actually in the corrupt side of the map meaning that you're going to have to pull survivors away from the generators that they're trying to work on to get the save but we do see a tinkerer prox here and it looks like Blight is going to respond to that good early pressure for him coming into the second game here. Ooh, and I like the Ooh. play there, seeing the Repressed Alliance. You know, I feel like we've been seeing a little bit more of Repressed Alliance um, a little bit re here recently since the uh, more recent buff to the cooldown on it. And I like it here, right? We do see there you're able to put the... Um, a lot, you know, the, the Repressed Alliance onto it. The one thing to keep in mind, though, as we see Leon getting pushed off the gen, that if there's not a survivor by, once Repressed Alliance comes off of that gen, it will also start regressing at that 200% thanks to that tier 3 Ruin. Ruin is indeed a deadly perk here, and Repressed Alliance can only do so much. I do like that Repressed Alliance at least doesn't like have to worry about Ruin, but that will be our first generator as a survivor goes down, unfortunately. Yeah, and to keep in mind, it does look like the generator that was complete was the one that we had already seen the Tinkerer Prox on, which was the Repressed Still Lions there. So we are going to see another Tinkerer Prox. However, we're going to see Fry opting to not put pressure there. I do like this idea. You put pressure elsewhere because you figure that gen's probably close to completion, as we see right there. We do now make our way towards the Fang. Oh, gets done, stupid. Plus 10 wood to the face yet again. Our Fang here doing really good handling the pallets when unfortunately not able to make it all the way to the wall to make collision. So Fang now going to be able to move back in towards the middle here, trying to use the body to prevent the collision, but that is going to be a down onto Haley. We have gotten the save, but I think this should be a fresh hook onto Haley, so you're at least spreading the pressure a little bit and only have had two gens completed. Yep, Blight giving that love to everybody as Fang goes on the hook and he goes off searching for the next one. And I like it here. You know, this is interesting. This is kind of that that risk you take when you run Ruin in competitive DVD. We see it often. Sometimes, you know, you run just a Ruin and it stands up for four to five minutes. Sometimes you bring in Ruin and Undying and it is, uh, they're both, you know, cleansed in the first 45 seconds. We do see here that that Illegal is a, uh, you know, a deliverance play here by the Fang, which does mean the Fang was able to get off the hook by herself, meaning that you have three survivors probably spread amongst three separate gens at this point working on them. Deliverance generally has the decisive strike. No decisive strike here on the Haley, though. That is Yay. going to be another hook. Hook number two for Haley. Four hooks all together. Fry a decent bit of pressure here, but you would definitely like to get another hook relatively quickly here. Absolutely. And while we still have three gens left, we have seen gens go pretty darn quick so far. Yeah, we do see now coming across. We had found the uh, Claudette, now also find the Leon as well. So we'll be able to put pressure on a multiple people by just one location. That's good. That means less people working on Jen, less pressure on those Jens as well. We do see here now coming in across. We, that is going to be Repressed Alliance. Once again, big value here because keep in mind during the Repressed Alliance, you do not lose the regression from that Ruin as we had talked about earlier. But also keep in mind the one thing that is kind of working in fry's uh favor i was saying at least for a little bit was the fact that he was undetectable now though going back for the unhook i like this play knowing that Haley is on death hook however Haley doing a good job of moving back towards the big loop here that is the gas station especially because the gas station gen has already been complete you're kind of free to use your uh resources over here but fry being very very good in the loop here that's gonna be a down and with no decisive strike that's an elimination with only two gens complete and we don't even have another tinkerer prox yet yeah it does not seem like those survivors have been able to get those gens done yet uh we saw the one oh but there goes there goes the generator 
Yeah, that was that one that had the repressed alliance earlier. So now still looking though across the way, we, we you know, now we're talking at being a 3v1 scenario and anyone who plays Dead by Daylight, whether it be competitive or even just in regular games, knows how much it changes once it's a 3v1, right? Like the whole aspect of the game, especially looking around here. Yeah, you've broken up like a true three gen by your survivors here. Um, but as the blight, really, most generator spreads can still be somewhat of a three gen, right? Absolutely. And getting that really nice window hit. We are seeing some really nice plays from our blight here. Yeah, I like seeing the uh, the really confident uses of the uh, the rushes here by the blight. Really able to navigate around. We do see some blight sometimes having the issues there, especially some of the tighter loots. We do see Fry able to secure yet another down, and that is still without another tinkerer prox. Keep in mind. So that is going to be a hook here on this portion of the map, kind of, uh, you know, you can keep an eye on a couple of gens, but also away from the farthest gen. So you're probably gonna be having people pulled off of those generators here. You do have two healthy survivors. We do see a ruin prox here. Ooh, that's gonna be a nice little slide to get the Harley Quinn. Love the plays here by Fry. Some very nice, just like curves and flicks here from our blight. Yeah, we do see he was hoping maybe to get the protection at the window. Definitely a harder uh, little tile to work with the long wall, but we get the hit Ooh, around the corner. I see. Fry has come to play. Said, you know what? I know we're looking at a little bit of a uh, difference here, but this is where the S tier comes out. You can count on me, and that is going to be Harley Quinn's first. So if I'm not mistaken, I do believe that should secure the fresh hook on all of them at this point. Um... And one of them, I believe it is the, I think it's the Leon is on death hook. So you have located the one survivor that well, I was going to say healthy, but we do see that the reset coming into Leon. I'm not sure if that was a self healer with a med kit, a little bit of uh, shaking it off there by Fry and kind of able to keep a nice little zone here, right? You know where one survivor is. There's the ruin finally getting cleansed. We're talking about three generators in. And uh, also worth keeping in mind here, we're going to see Fry coming across the way here, coming for the kick. We are going to see the sparks and the smoke that is going to be pop goes the weasel. So maybe no more help from the ruin as far as regression. But at the rate that Fry has been able to acquire these hooks, Fry should still be able to acquire quite a bit of regression with that pop throughout the rest of the trial here. Absolutely. And checking on his hook survivor, he does, in fact, find some scratch marks and locks in on somebody else. Yeah, that's going to be the Claudette came in and Claudette was not able to make it before the second stage is forced. This is huge. Oh, oh I think was maybe trying to force the pallet drop here. Now try, going to try and stay around. Might as well go ahead and take the uh, take the hook here onto the Claudette. Keep in mind, I believe it was the Claudette who had used uh, the, I think, actually no, I'm not even 100% sure on that. I'm not even going to finish that sentence, but we are going to see back over here over at the shack. Ooh. My goodness. Goodness gracious, Fry is on goodness. fire. Fry is not messing around today. That's going to be in another elimination. So you are now down to a 2v1 here. You have a player that is hanging up on a hook. And the uh, Leon that is left in the trial is also on a death hook. So you're not, if you are able to secure this last player, you're not even losing points to progressions here. Fry has done a very, very good job of maximizing... The potential on points here absolutely definitely going for everything he can here only one progression as well i think everything else has been uh a hook so he'll get full points for every almost every single um state he's gone and actually my correction uh it's two progressions yeah and now we do see uh fry coming over this way there is no symbol of haste status so there is no no ed at this point here um obviously there's the generators haven't been completed um but also keep in mind out there this is a base this is a 50 50 right this is a 50 50 for the hatch itself and fry does have the mobility advantage here and uh we're not hearing any sort of whirling or anything from the hatch itself so it looks like it is more a matter of when not a matter of if that should i was gonna say that should be the Ooh, flick there but nice play by miss. leon yeah yeah good avoiding that after seeing how um Adept Fry has been with these uh, flicks here. Yeah, now we have uh, located ourselves over here towards this long wall here on the jungle gym. Keep in mind here that at this point, though, you've kind of traversed this portion of the map. You still have yet to hear that hatch. So, oh, not able to reach there with this swing. 
But unless we have a hatch right here in the middle of the map, keep in mind we have already depleted a lot of our resources here in the middle of the map. Yeah, that's going to be a down there, and that is going to be a last and final hook. Chat, I'm not sure what resolution y'all are watching this in, but this does indeed look like a 4K to me. It does indeed look like that spicy 4K for Demise here. Absolutely fantastic blight gameplay from Fry, who is going to go put himself in the timeout corner for being so mean to those survivors. Yeah, and this is tough here, right? You're talking about you came in here, you had yourself, uh, you know, a nice little uh, chance to build your, to put yourself, your survivors in a good position here. And looking at the scoreboard, Demise has done just that. A nice little bounce back after the two hooks in the Fry. Um, and now you're talking about a 15 point lead, getting the 4k at just three generators complete. That's crazy. Yeah, that's really big. Those, uh, starving those survivors of points there for gens and like not just escapes, but also for not finishing those generators. It's going to really hurt them. Yeah. Especially, you know, knowing that the last gen is the one that like gets you the most points, right? So not only are you missing the three gens for the last one, but you're also missing the two gens for your fourth gen, a fourth completion. So that's five points that you're missing there. Um, while allowing, you know, we saw Fry was able to get pretty well. I don't want to say it wasn't 12 folks. There were a couple of progressions, but it, it was a 4k and a very, very strong performance on the left. And he does get those extra two points um, for that 4k. So it kind of makes up for those progression, those points he lost for progression, um, since it was only, I think, two progressions. Yeah, and you know, Demise right now looking really, really good, you know. Um, Definitely sitting pretty right now. It's been interesting to watch, like, the little back and forth that we've had kind of throughout the course, right? It's like one team has a lead, and then the next team has a lead. And then Demise just came out and had a very, very spicy performance on the Blight there. Um, this is kind of what you love to see in competitive, and I think it reiterates kind of the point we talked about after trial number two, right? Where sometimes just a couple mistakes create a huge difference on the scoreboard, and we've seen that hit repetitive, right? Absolutely. Everyone definitely is showing here that it really pays off to punish any mistakes that you see being made. Mm -hmm. And I really love that both Demise and Deadheads are keeping it so close to each other. It's like they're like continually trying to one-up each other which makes it just really exciting. I'm really excited to go into this fourth trial and see just what happens. Cause really it could be anyone's game at this point. There's still like, no one is out of the running here yet. Yeah. Even you know, going into a fourth game. Yeah. You know, this is kind of what you hope for when you show up for Vigo's court game, right? You want it to go to the point where we're heading into the fourth trial and we might not know our decision until like right before the ending here. Um, wouldn't be surprised to see deadhead he, deadheads here uh, make a decision like we saw Demise make in trial number three, knowing that you're looking at a little bit of a de deficit, maybe bringing out Nest here. Not sure if Blight's the play or not, but um, I don't know. What do you think? What What's your thought process here if you're deadhead looking at a 15 point um, deficit? You know, I don't know if I would meet a Blight with a Blight because I think we have seen before uh, teams Playing against teams who show up really strongly with one killer, probably not a good idea to play that killer against them because they have practiced against that killer a lot. Right. So, um, I think they are going to want to respond with a strong killer if they want to bring this back. But I don't really know. I kind of, I don't know. I kind of want to see a Huntress, but I don't know if she's going to be strong enough to really pull this back for them. What do you think? Who do you want to see? Um, you know, that's a good question. I, I would like a Huntress, um... But the Huntress isn't necessarily known for being able to output a lot of like early game pressure, right? Like usually you're looking at having to make some plays in the you know mid to late game in order to wrap up a second, third, and then if you're lucky, a fourth, um, you know, kill. Huntress isn't a, a killer that typically comes out and racks in the the three and four Ks consistently. Um, I know I said before I like the thought of Billy. The only worry about Billy is Billy kind of has some of the same struggles, right? Like, yeah, you have the ability to traverse the map, but again, Billy kind of tends to struggle in the early game. I don't know. I think it's tough here. I do think you have to bring out an S tier killer, and I just don't know if this is where you get the most use out of spirit. So maybe you do have to kind of go against the grain, like you talked about. Normally, you don't want to meet, but maybe maybe you just have confidence in your blight and meet your blight with a blight. 
Yeah, potentially. I mean, I think um, early pressure is such a hard... Th I feel like there are not enough high-tier killers who can put out that early pressure, except for, like, Nurse, but I don't think anyone really wants to pull out a Nurse right now. Yeah. Um, a Hag could be a really good option, but again, that's, no like, very little early game pressure because she has to set up. Right. Um, and while that allows her, while her uh, traps allow her to teleport across the map pretty, not teleport, but traverse the map really quickly, um, that setup could be really killer for her if she can't get those traps down before the survivors can finish generators. Yeah, you know, I do see um, a couple of people even in chat mentioning Plague. Um, one thing, though, to keep in mind, even Plague the same way, though, right? Like a killer that's kind of typically known for struggling a little bit in the early game. But um, we have seen Plague got the buff here. Now, at this point, we're talking about relatively recently, right? That big old chunky mid-chapter patch was a couple yeah, months removed Yeah, those nice, now. nice buffs. Right. Um, but I think even still with that being said... Um, Maybe not quite. However, I was just thinking about it. Maybe this is the twins play, depending on what Cades feels like, how Cades feels about their twins player, their, their, their twins play. Yeah, if they have a strong twins, that might be that might be the game here. Someone said Bubba. And I mean, if you can get those first couple of hits and uh, those early slugs with that chainsaw, Bubba could. I mean, if you have a really good Bubba, I feel like maybe. But that's so risky. Twins, twins might be the safer bet here. Um, being able to be in two places at once, you can put down that really early pressure. Uh, Victor's kind of a bastard to deal with um, if you aren't used to playing against the Twins, especially. Um, so that can just cause problems for everyone, like, no matter where you are. Yeah, you know, especially because I feel like Twins is one of those killers that either your team knows how to handle Twins, or they really don't, right? And maybe this is where you can get lucky and you're going against a team that maybe doesn't quite have uh, the experience for the Twins. And maybe you can catch him out of position. Uh, maybe you can catch him giving up, surrendering, surrendering some like early M1s that allow the Twins to really get to that position where they're able to flex with multiple people injured. So um, the more I think about it, I, I like the thought of the Twins. Also because Twins are one of those killers that more or is like easier to get like the seventh and eighth progressions right get yourself some extra points that way yeah um victor can be really hard to deal with some people for some people um someone's asking for oni in chat i mean it could be if you can get that but again it's that early game you know you have to get that pressure down um oni is kind of you not unique um but kind of unique for some of our higher tier killers where he needs to injure survivors to even have access to his power. He like he depends on the survivors to get his power. So if they if the survivors can play keep away, Oni might not do any good here because you know they can just deny his power from him. Yeah, Oni's always a uh, very interesting breed because his power spike is obviously matched really by no one, right? Like having the ability to just instantly keep a constant train of one shot down that you just you can go anywhere on the map if you have the right bit of information right um but like you said the the thing where only really struggles is the early game and keep in mind in the competitive scene you don't have people greeting pallets the same way that you would like in public matches right if we have anybody here who may might be new to the competitive scene that's why you see a lot of pre-throw we talked about it earlier we saw shag pallet going down at five gens right you don't yeah. mind seeing yeah. that because you one you're in comm obviously being in comms anybody who plays the game knows how much that helps but because you're playing with people who are very um adept at what they do you can count on them to be somewhere else holding m1 and hitting some skill checks right absolutely um but it looks like it's about that time to figure out how this fourth trial is about to go everybody is all ready and i hope you guys are as excited as i am to see how this last game turns out make sure um you guys let's check out these offerings as soon as the game decides it wants to show it to us people are also asking for pig actually i'm seeing in chat and i'm like pig i mean you know rng why not Piggy right <laughs> risky 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 but the boops we see that all of our um offerings are right so let's go ahead and check out penalties while we wait for our game to load in All right, guys, so matches with penalties. You hate to see it, but they may be played out or restarted 
or both. The choice is up to our teams. Um, penalties can be two of the same survivor, ban perk, item, or add-on. That's a negative five points and a possible restart. They could choose to restart if they wanted to after that point. Um, a wrong map is a negative five points and an auto restart. Harassing the ref, bringing players out on the roster, and technical foul fouls are negative ten per offense with no restart. So don't do that. Don't harass our refs. That's not very nice. Come on, guys. Using the Exhausted Killer, negative 10 points, and another auto restart. Delaying the game is negative 1 point for every minute over 5 minutes as well. For more on rules, go ahead and type exclamation mark rules in chat and check those out for yourselves. That's right. Keep in mind, chat, this is what you show up for. We're heading into trial number four. Demise. This is it. Versus Deadhead. We are looking at a, uh, a little bit of a point spread, but keep in mind, that we are heading into the killer rounds here. So with a little bit more uh, points being available on that side, you do have the ability to uh, close that gap a little bit quicker. Um, going to be interesting to see here because I, I, I don't have the math right offhand, but I think you have to have a really strong hand. I think at least 3K with like eight or nine hooks. Yeah, the this is going to have to be a really good game. Um to bring those points back but i don't know i i it could happen i mean these both of these teams have shown that they are taking this very seriously and they've played really well so i don't know oh and it looks like we had a survivor actually that did not make it into the trial um, we are going to, yeah, I think uh, we're going to want to call that and maybe reset here because this is a little unfair to, to start uh, one hand behind your back there. Yeah, that was probably uh, what led to that longer load time there. It does look like we had a survivor that uh, was unable to make it in. So we'll have to double check that in the background. Make sure we've got everything good to go. Um, make sure that it's like not a no start or, you know, as far as what sort of thing we have going on there so let's go ahead and uh, kind of bring it on back here and let's kind of while we go back into the lobby um again let's let's, let's look back at things right now you've got deadhead looking at a 15 point um deficit but again going out now on killer's nine right so at least you have the potential for more points mm -hmm. Te uh, technically the killer can gain um the most amount of points here for their team so a lot of potential to have a comeback honestly um all they need to do is secure 3k easy easy peasy yeah and you know uh, i'll be interested to see we saw um well if they didn't see i'm not gonna say it actually so um, we'll, we'll, I'll be interested yeah, to see keep that secret. I'll be interested to see if anything as far as uh, change. If it's a no fault restart because of like a just a internet disconnect, I do believe everyone has the ability to change up builds and everything if they want. Absolutely, um, yep. So I'll be interested to see if our killer takes that option uh, because obviously their build has been revealed at no fault of their own. Um, but I feel like they were probably coming out with a relatively uh, strong killer for the position they're in. So I'll be interested to see what they do as far as their approach here. Yeah, I wonder, and I wonder, um, if you didn't see the killer, you will when we load into the next game. But I wonder if uh, if they change what they've brought. They Everyone knows what's on the table now. Yeah, I mean, I feel like at least if you're on the survivor side, especially if it's a no-fault restart, you at least switch up who has your decisive, right? Absolutely. Yeah, they already kind of know. Um, so don't pick up this person when they've been unhooked. Right, right, right. You want to at least switch that around. Probably also want to switch your uh, your deli around if you're bringing, bringing that in. Um, and I mean, if you're talking about switching your deli and your di decisive, I mean, might as well even switch your borrowed times around just to completely throw the killer off. Just... Obviously, of course, when it comes to switching builds around and everything like that in between trials, especially when you're already planning to go in with one, you just want to make sure that you don't have any duplicate items or perks, like, yeah, like we talked about, right? Yeah. Yeah, a good chance to ensure... Um, it's always hard when you like have to disconnect and reconnect to something, because sometimes it resets you, so hopefully uh, 
We don't see any issues with that accidental. It looks like actually the survivor um, that didn't load in got DC'd. So, uh, fingers crossed that they are on top of making sure that, you know, no duplicates of anything. Yeah, I like it. And while we, um, while we wait for Fry here for two minutes, in case we have anybody who has happened to, um, maybe just kind of stroll in here, let's go ahead and talk about what map we're going to be playing on, shall we? We can absolutely do that if you guys have missed it we are on gas heaven an auto haven records map it has a 13 hook maximum and eight hook minimum it's kind of a weird shape but still pretty square uh it is demise's home map um so home field advantage for demise deadheads are looking to keep up anyway not a bad not a bad map not my favorite map but you know definitely a fun one to play on the that long uh, car wall kind of sucks yeah, uh, you know, the what, the way that it, it separates the map can be really tricky depending on what killer you come with, right? Because um, if you don't have a killer that has high mobility or um, some sort of way to move, whether it be a nurse blink or a demo dog uh, portal or something like that, those walls, like you said, they can be a, re a real nuisance for you, uh, especially yeah. if you catch yourself in one of those back corners. That, that also works, though, for the survivors, too, if you catch yourself in a dead zone. Mm -hmm. And um, we didn't quite see it in the Blight game, but even with high mobility killers like Blight, sometimes you don't, like, just game decides, yeah, you know what, we're not going to collide here, you're just going to slide right off. Right. And off you go. Yeah, that, that's so. actually a really good point. You know, um, it's interesting, because I feel like we have seen thus far um, a nice little spread of killers from both teams, right? Uh, we saw the clown pick early. Uh, we saw the blight come out. We saw, I think, a what was probably a little bit of a, a disappointing. I, I think would probably be fair for demise. They probably felt like it was a little bit of disappointing uh, performance. Like on the Freddy Killer, you probably hope it wished you kind of would have gotten a couple more hooks, right? Uh, whether it been mm -hmm. securing a elimination or at least taking away some of those extra points, uh, whether it be those those extra uh, hook or I guess uh, hook stages points the survivors got once they left out there. Actually, I will say, I think during that Freddy game, I really didn't notice him using his teleport that much. So I wonder if that is um, kind of like a contributing factor to what hurt him. Not utilizing your killer's power. Of course, he inherently gets the dream state. That will just happen after a set amount of time. So, you know, the um, lack of a terror radius and instead subjecting survivors having to deal with just the lullaby mm -hmm. can be used to your advantage as a killer. But if you don't use your teleport, Freddy's not that fast. He's a little man. Short little legs. Yeah, yeah, you know, and especially with the recent changes where you've only got so many dream snares too, right? Like, you can't uh, leave them across the map. You, you've only got basically five, is it five now, I think, right? That you can rotate through. So if, even if they haven't been ran through by a survivor, you, you only have so much help, right? Yeah, um... Definitely kind of wondering, but then again, you know, that also comes back to like, you have to use your powers, guys. Um, and so killers where uh, your power relies on the survivors can be really dangerous here. Because as you can see, he had access to his power, didn't use it um, for whatever reason he chose not to use it. And I think it took away a lot of pressure for him. Didn't even really see a lot of fakes or anything, really. Yeah, I can't help but wonder, though, if because you have like the ruin undying both up for so long i mean keep in mind ruin undying was up through the first four gens getting complete maybe if you get like that little extra like sense of security because you know that you have not only ruin but an additional totem protecting the ruin right um but then all of a sudden you lose both of those and you know then you can teleport all you want you know, you've got four people left in the game and three gens to protect you know what i mean yeah, so definitely um, definitely something to consider. If you guys are competitors in this game, or if you're interested in playing um, in Vigo's Court in the future, gotta remember to utilize all of the tools at your disposal. Yeah, I think this is, uh, this is also going to be really tough here, too, for your survivors, because your survivors, um, you know, right now... I, I would even, wouldn't even. I don't know if I would say survivors over killer. Um, 
but just the, like the extra downtime for for both sides but i feel like especially for um just deadheads in general knowing that you're kind of waiting to get into the things so so you can start cutting into your lead here this is like a uh, extra freezing of the kicker i guess you could say kind of sort of thing without it being intentional thanks to internet yeah you know? Yeah, kind of an unfortunate, like, tech issues, they happen. But while we're waiting, how about we go ahead and talk about what the rest of the weekend holds for us? I believe we have quite a few games still coming up left uh, this weekend. Yeah, we've got a pretty good, um, just as far as for the rest of this week, and let me make sure I've got the right times pulled up here. We have got, um, tomorrow we've got 6 and DKD at 3 p.m., we have Arctic Wolves. I think that's Arctic Wolves and Corrupt at 6 p.m. That's going to be a really, really good game. I'm really excited to see that game. And then we've got um, IA versus Hex Girls at 9 p.m. So we've got a nice full slot tomorrow. And then we've also got a really busy day Thursday or Saturday as well. So um, definitely can't wait to see the next two days worth of games here. We do see Fry loading into the lobby here, so it is nice to see that Fry was able to get the internet connected right back. Should be able to uh, get the builds and everything um, wound back together. I'm just going to go ahead and actually stay here in the spectator role at this point since, you know, we've already been able to check everything else there. We do actually see Fry also already getting ready to go, so can't help but wonder if maybe Fry already has his uh, has the comp filled uh, set on a on a survivor there, so you love to see all of them getting ready to go. Again, can't help but wonder though. I am not gonna say what Killer Cades came out with, just in case we have anybody who didn't know. I don't want to spoil the surprise, um, but I'll, I'll be interested to see if you switch up your killer pick here. Yeah, kind of interesting because uh, our survivors did get a chance to notice who it was. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if you stay firm in that pick or if you maybe want to shake it up and throw them off guard a little bit since they do have the chance to kind of switch builds around there. Right, right. With the no fault restart, you know, we're not going to be seeing any sort of uh, penalties assessed. We're not going to be seeing either team have to be stuck with their builds or anything like that. Um, we had mentioned our survivors here more than likely are going to be switching up. At least the deliverance are pro or the, at least the decisive strike probably the deliverance as well but um i don't know man we're talking about again we're going into our last trial it all comes down to this and we're talking about a 15 point lead right now for demise and uh you know they're probably feeling pretty good here knowing that uh they're set up for success heading into trial four yeah as long as they can hold that lead um I mean, Cade has a lot of ground he has to cover, but I think he can do it. I don't know. We've seen him do some pretty intense things, and it looks like we are ready to rock and roll, folks. Let's go into match four. And, um, yeah, what do you think we should go over? What, have we, what do we have left to well, go over here? since we are heading into this last trial here, and it is our killer that uh, has the, the stress on them, right, to try and bring this, this point back. Let's go ahead and cap over how the killer can surmount those points here since Deadhead's gonna gonna need to get those to try and get the win. Sound good? Sounds good to me. Yeah, for those of you guys who don't know, this is how Cades can bring those points back in um, to win this game. The first and second hook are worth two points each. That third hook is three points. Progressions are worth one point less. Herc, I, why did I say Herc? I'm sorry. <laughs> Seventh and eighth progressions are going to be worth one point each as well. The 4K is worth two additional points so very important he might want to really try to get that 4k here an entity kill is worth the corresponding hook state so wherever they die um plus progressions um so the negative one point for not getting the actual hook bleed outs are equal zero points so he doesn't want to leave them now to bleed out there are 30 points available for kids to earn here for more on rules check exclamation mark rules in chat all right that's right don't ask me, don't ask your mama. Use exclamation point rules. That'll get you taken care of. We do see, though, we do see Cade's ops to stick with the nurse here. Coming out, trial number four. You are looking at a 55 to 40 score. You're down 15 points. Needing a very, very strong um, performance here. We do see pushing over here. You have been able to locate, I believe that is the Claudette. And you'll also notice when we came over and pushed the survivor off of that gen, we did notice those sparks there. That is going to be the Ruin paired up with the Corrupt Intervention to try and get a little bit of slowdown early game here. 
Oh, swing and a miss, but we have locked on to Nea here, it seems. Playing around this car wall here, which Nurse can handle with no problem. Unless she gets wall blink, uh, blink bugged. Yeah, now this, the, I think the big thing here is keeping track of Cades over the next, like, 90 seconds. Because if I, if I know Demise the way I think I know Demise, they're going to spread pressure here really good on these gens. They are probably going to find the ruin relatively quickly. There's actually generator number Ooh, one coming in. That first gen. And that's going to be a swing and a miss there as well. So we're going to be seeing some distance built by Fry. So goodbye, Fry. Fry going on the backside there. Now actually locating the Zarina here. Uh, that's going to be a swing and a miss, though. Now allowing the Zarina to come back here more towards the backside of the TNL. But of course, the TNL really don't mean nothing to a nurse, right? She can just blink right through that. Ignore those obstacles. And uh, keep on the chase here. That is going to be a ruin getting cleansed there across the way. Now keep in mind here, we're coming over here. We see that generator in the middle. No one working on it. But there's no sparks on it as well. So that does mean that there was not an undying protecting the ruin. So uh, there is no more regression as far as from the ruin to help Cades here. Meaning that Cades really needs to put the pedal down here and start securing some downs. Absolutely. I'm not sure if that was just a spectator glitch or if that was firecrackers being thrown there. Yeah, we do see now coming over here and we hear a little bit of uh, pressure on that gen, meaning more than likely someone's actually over there working on that. That's going to be generator number two coming in across the way. That is going to be a nice uh, second bleak there onto Paige. That is going to be a hit onto the Claudette there. Uh, now we are going to see the confident one blink. Now getting the second blink. Ooh, with the nice Ooh, hit onto the, the Claudette. Down. Yeah, that's really beautiful. Big there. Yeah, really important. This is going to be our first, uh, first down for this match. Now, here's going to be what's interesting is um, what happens because we've got survivors split up across the map here. And, man, that's a third generator already getting done. Only ge uh, hook number one. And keep in mind when we pass this generator that Case is going towards right now, this thing had about 25, 30% on it. So it does sound like it is further, meaning that there's a good chance that there is a survivor somewhere around here. But with the kick there, you'll see the sparks. You'll see the smoke. That's pop goes the weasel. So at least Cades can earn 25% regression with each hook. Absolutely. And we're going to blink back to our hook, which is probably a good idea because you know there are at least two survivors over here. Ooh. Not able to get the hit before the pallet comes down. That's going to be plus 10 wood to the face. And now that's Paige making some big distance. That's actually really big here, right? Because Absolutely. A stun on the nurse is not easy. Yeah, a stun on the nurse is hard to do. And also keep in mind that Paige had just came off the hook. With that, if you had been able to get the hit there, maybe you can get a second hook early, get a quicker uh, elimination, and maybe start pulling a little bit of pressure back. But Kate's knows the situation that they're in, knowing that they basically need a 3K with a whole bunch of hooks. And we only have one hook so far in the game. Kate's definitely feeling the pressure. Absolutely. And I mean, it's not game over yet, but it's looking pretty scary as we get stunned yet again. Yeah, really good job by our survivors here. Like, oh my goodness gracious. A third stun. That is crazy, man. Really good, uh, really good play as far as buyer survivors because the stun does, does a couple of things. One, allows you to build the distance, but two, it obviously avoids the hit, which is hard to do against a nurse. And you've seen it a couple of times. The stun prevents the change in health state. There is a fourth gen coming in, and we're still in chase with the D, and there's another swing and a miss. I think right now what we're seeing is just a lot of Cade feeling the pressure and maybe going for some swings that normally Cades would yeah, definitely some uh, ambitious swings here, but we do get that hit on Naya just as our last generator pops. Ooh, the dead hard. Nice dead hard from Naya to avoid going down here. Um, but I don't know if you're seeing what I'm seeing. I do think I see a haste effect here. Yeah, we are seeing the haste effect. Nice little uh, double back there by the Naya, but that's a door already open and Knowing the situation that they're in would not be surprised to see the survivors. Yeah, take the three out there walking out the door. That is going to wrap up the game for Demise here.
having a really, really good performance coming out. Um, wow, just really taking control of things over the last couple of trials, right? Absolutely, just came in and tore through those generators. Absolutely just slammed through them. And it's crazy to think about because keep in mind that Demise, um, they had the good start in trial number one on the survivor side, right? And then you come out in your first game on the Freddy and get two staged. And then you come out and have a very, very good light round. And then you two, well, you two stage in a progression, a nurse, like really, really good performance all the way around from Demise. Um, I want, I can't help but wonder after seeing performance like that from Demise, I can't help but wonder if they're if they're if they're drinking the juice that Demise has been drinking lately. You know, I have a feeling they might be sharing there because that was a really strong showing from Demise. And Deadheads played very well today, but I mean that gen pressure from Demise was insane. Yeah, you know, and I don't want that to be. Well, I don't think the score really really shows how close the two teams really were. Because again, keep in mind, right? Dead has had a very, very strong survivor performance in trial number two. Maybe just had a couple of mistakes in the Blight game. And then I think there at the end was just a situation of having a lot of pressure on you as a killer, seeing the gens start to fly. And then on top of that, it's like, we've all been there, right? You miss, you, you missed a couple of swings and then like you're getting in your own head a little bit, knowing that you have the pressure, but you're missing which then makes you miss the next like swing even more so that, you know what I mean? You're swinging before yeah. you should, and it's just a big old snowball. Yeah, definitely that pressure uh, can really get to you in those like really clutch moments. So definitely really hard. That was a, a quite a point deficit to have to make up. Yeah, and you know, and it, it's worth saying just simply because, um, you know, we have, we have talked about the connection between Demise and Demise, but now between the two of them <laughs> in back-to-back -back days, we're talking about 168 points. That's absolutely insane. We're talking about two great performances from like two like really good groups of friends that are kind of known for being knit together, right? Absolutely, and it really gets to show that um, teamwork and camaraderie, even for your killers, will really help you get through that. Um, and it goes to just prove that this game is a team game like mm -hmm. your team does this together so like your killers you know may, even though it's just the one killer um you have to rely on each other there like you know you are responsible for earning more points to either like take the lead or keep the lead and you're doing that together it's it's never about just one match yeah and you had talked about um you know heading into the matchup how We've seen some teams kind of have to, to rely more on the killer or more on the survivor side of matchmaking. And I do feel like we actually saw today, both sides actually showed um, some glimpses of very strong side, very, very strong performances on both sides of the matchmaking. Absolutely. And uh, it does look like we do have Big Ollie here for an interview. So why don't we switch to our main screen and get to chatting? Big boy Ollie here? The one, the only. Yo, what's up? How are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing good. How are you guys doing? Good, thank you for asking. Good to hear. So how are you feeling after coming? Like, that was kind of like a big, like, back and forth, right? Like, you take the lead early, then uh, a tough second trial, but then three and four stacking them up back to back and uh, ends up with, with the yeah. dub, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was very close. It was closer than we were, than we were hoping for. Obviously, every team wants to be able to you know get in and smash it but it was a lot it was very close um there was a lot of tense moments that uh yeah it was very tense overall especially the uh the freddy game uh for our killer yeah that was very tense uh you know getting four stages obviously putting us behind at that point that was very uh very scary but luckily fry is an absolute blight demon yeah so managed to come on 4k at two gens so pretty good yeah you guys absolutely uh were able to turn that around going into that last game um knowing kind of what the 
conditions to win were. How did you guys feel going into that? Was there any added stress? There was added stress, yeah. Um, there was a lot of different tactics as well, because we uh, we studied well squid, um, you know, studied the uh, the rules and scoring, and we managed to like uh, deduce what exactly we needed to do to win, and we figured out what we needed, and that's why me and Paige instantly left after the doors unlocked because uh, one one me escaping, I was fresh hook, you know, that was just instantly win. Yeah. So. You know, yeah, very doesn't... smart to keep track of points like that. Mm, yeah, it was. It was. I, if Squid that wasn't keeping count, I don't know if we would have done that. So it's lucky we haven't. So I have a question that I'm curious about because we saw right, like you, you even mentioned about after trial number two, a little bit of a struggle. Is that a point between trial two and three? Because we saw that Fry stayed on the killer, right? Mm -hmm. Is that where the rest of your survivors are? Getting in his, it, getting in Fry's ear at that point, trying trying to pick Fry up, or is that one of those situations where like you just let Fry get in the zone and 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 do what Fry does best? Typically, we do just let. Fry, I mean, Fry isn't one of the people to like deafen. Like we do like talk to him while he's playing, but he is our killer player, and mm -hmm. you know, so like all respect to that. You know, he is you know the mind behind the killer. Like, right. Uh, He's the killer player, so most of the time he's going to know the best decisions. But obviously, as he's playing, sometimes he doesn't realize stuff that we might be able to watching his uh, screen share. So we do. We, I think it helps to be able to call things out to him. But yeah, he's definitely the mastermind behind his choices. Definitely nice to see that you guys have so much support for each other, um, even even admitting like yeah you know it's it's fry's show when he's playing killer but that you guys are still there for him um yeah, and that there yeah. you guys have like an incredible amount of trust between each other yeah fry's, fry's a great killer i think everyone here can agree with that yeah i would agree so um now i do i i am curious um now at this point right like you, you kind of you you are you're through week two here is there any one team that right now demise like has circled on the on the schedule for like who you're looking forward to going up against mm, well obviously demise being our, <laughs> right 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 being <laughs> our sister team as a you know a big one for us we've only gone against them once so far because we're still a new team um uh we've only played against them once so far um in a, in a, in a tourney um so it'll be nice to play against them again get a little rematch going and do you have anything to say to deadheads any parting words um for your competitors here today um ggs um you you guys played really well on the survivor side um and and killer side uh you uh i can't remember what, what did you play you played nurse and uh clown uh I mean, your clown got like six stages. That's really good. Yeah, and the clown round round was fun to watch, honestly, from both it sides. It was. It was fun to play. I always love playing against the clown. It's good fun. Um, yeah, just GGs. Your survivor play was great. Your your killer play was especially specifically the clown was great. You know, great. I could I could tell that was great teamwork going on. Beautiful. And do you have? Anything you want to say to the fans of Demise or Vigos? Uh, anything else that you would like to let everyone know? Um, I've watched almost every single one of these like interviewers say the exact same thing, and I'm going to say the exact same thing again, <laughs> and just say thank you for watching because I don't really know what else to say. Um, you know, you thank you for letting okay. us. Thank you for letting us. You know, be on your screens and. Uh, some DVD. Good fun. And thank you so much for giving us a little bit of your time today to talk about the game. Um, but it does look like, you guys, Demise has been convicted of murder. And, uh, yeah, thank you so much for joining us today. You're welcome. All okay. right. And uh, keep in mind, chat, you know, we, we already mentioned it earlier, but we do have three more awesome matchups tomorrow to keep an eye out for. We'll be right back here at three, six and nine. And then we've got, I think it's three more matches on Saturday, right? 
Um, yeah, I do believe so. We have three matches on Friday and three matches on Saturday, so make sure you guys are checking out. Um, if you aren't already following Vigos, you should be. Turn on your notifications so you get those notifications when we go live, but also make sure that you follow our social media where um, we post what you can look forward to, what's going on in the league, and all of those juicy, fun details. All right, another wise chat. I do believe that should wrap things up for us. We do appreciate everyone coming out. Again, keep in mind, we'll be back here tomorrow. Y'all be safe, and y'all have a good rest of y'all's Thursday night, all right? Have a good night, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Same time, same place. Not same time, same place, though. <laughs> Peace. You know